All right, I lost my signal the first time. It is Saturday, April 15th. Um, Rob has now been up early two days on the golf course with his friends in town, or three days, what's today, Saturday? Um, two days, and uh, so that's a little bit crazy. So this morning, you know, I started reading a new book. I actually did something that's very hard for me. I picked up a new book and I put all my other ones away because I'm like doing so many things and I'm like, it's a clean slate. Because as you know, there's a book that I love, um, Rhonda Epstein, Satisfied. And there's a devotional like study guide that goes with that. So I picked that, took that back off the shelf this week. And then of course I was walking through the step study of Celebrate Recovery again. So I had that, I put that back on the shelf. I was reading 40 Day Sugar Fast, doing that. I had my online, I was like, you're losing your mind. So I started reading a new book, Get Out of Your Head by Jenny Allen. So far, so good. So far, I'm still in my head, but I'm only in the beginning. So this morning, I was flipping through to see where my notes were for um, this morning because I knew I'd written something um, a couple days ago, but I came across something that really spoke to me. So I thought I'd share um, on that. And as you know, I I'm kind of love the whole fitness nutrition scene. And so I was reading, I think it was in Rob Wolf's book, I forget the name of Rob Wolf's book. Eat, no, it's something about nutrition. Anyway, Rob Wolf, he, paleo guy. And I believe it was in that book. And he says, artificial sweeteners are the gateway to drugs. So it's talking about eating clean, taking all the junk out of your diet. And I'm like, ooh, that's not only true for nutrition, that's true for life. Like when we seek the fake thing, the artificial thing, then we're opening ourselves to others. So lots of times when you, you go to, you're, you're trying to not eat gluten. So you try to, you start eating, going to the store and buying gluten-free pizza crust or whatever. And you don't realize how much garbage is in that. So we're seeking, we're starting to, we're just trying to get the other thing. My other, so my subtitle for this is looking for life in all the wrong places. So I just wanna share quickly um, some references to places when we look the wrong way. My first is in 1 Kings 19. And in 1 Kings 19, some of you will know this. This is when Elijah, he's worn out. He's seeking the Lord. And in 1 Kings 19, <clears throat> we have this passage and it says, um, but the Lord said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. Well, he wasn't in that big event. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. So <clears throat> one of the ways we seek the wrong thing, that we go for the artificial, is we're, we're looking for it in the big moment. Um, I was sharing with someone not long ago, they were asking about when I was first saved. And, you know, you, when you kind of grow up in the faith, um, I, I just went to church on my own. It was across the street. There was a great, great children's choir director, Judy Draper. And I was a singer and an actress and I got to do all this stuff. So it was, it just happened for me. Um, so it was a gentle whisper, but sometimes we're looking for this explosive story. We're like, God, speak to me, you know, have a boat come across the harbor and say, Donna, be saved. This is for you. And sometimes it's not that. So we, we're looking for something different when God's in the everyday. He's in those different habits. I talk a lot about James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. He's in a lot of those little baby steps. Okay, let's go to another one. Let's go to Luke. And you're all going to be familiar with this. Well, most of you, if you read the word, if you don't, well, good time to start. We're in Luke 10. And this is the story of Mary and Martha waiting on Jesus. <clears throat> and we have, 
as Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed them into their, her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you're worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing to be concerned about. Mary's discovered it and it will not be taken from her. So it's not that Mary, Martha was wrong. It was that sometimes we have to stop and slow down to hear the Lord speak to us. It's not in proving ourselves to the Lord and proving ourselves to neighbor. I am a good believer. I'm serving Jesus right now in my own kitchen. And can my sister, it's about meeting God where he is and, and, and seeking God in, in his presence, not in the work. Um, in Mark 10, which we also talked about recently, we have the rich young ruler seeking um, God in all the wrong places. He's artificial sweeteners. He wants to use a formula. It's a fake way of getting. It's not, it says, the scripture says there's one way and it's through Jesus. It doesn't say there's one way and that's through following the law. The rich young ruler says, you know, how do I inherit eternal life? Don't testify falsely. You must not steal, cheat, honor your... Okay, I've done all those. I've met the checklist. It's like me with my Franklin Covey planner. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. There's still one thing you've done. Go and sell all your possessions. So we, again, uh, Elijah expected a certain thing. Martha expected a certain thing. The rich young ruler expected a certain one thing. Those are artificial ways. Okay? It doesn't it's not that works are wrong, it's not that big things are wrong. It's that things are not always what they seem. We look for things in the wrong places. Good morning, John. Um we're looking for God in the wrong ways. We're 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 we have, you know, we hear somebody um spoke you know, Jesus spoke to our friend at a Mercy Me concert in the big way and the angels were singing and you've had this surreal experience. Well, maybe, but maybe not. Maybe you're walking down the street and you meet your elderly neighbor who is having trouble um, getting her mail out of her mailbox and you have a word in a moment. It's not always what we think it is, okay? Finally, in numbers. Now, this is the greatest thing ever. You know, this is, you know, God has a sense of humor. Let me get to Numbers 22. Some of you will know what this is. I didn't know where the reference was, but it's always a great thing. The story of Balaam. So, the story of Balaam, if you know the story <clears throat> of Balaam, um, you know, so the donkey, the next morning, Balaam got up, saddled his donkey and started off to, with the Moabite officials. But God was angry that Balaam was going. So God, Balaam's doing his own thing. So he sent the angel of the Lord to stand in the road to block his way. Um, duh, you know, okay. As Balaam and two servants were riding along, Balaam's donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. Even the donkey knows um, the donkey bolted off the road into a field, but Balaam beat it and turned it back into the road. Then the angel stood at a place where the road narrowed between two vineyard walls. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it tried to squeeze by and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. So Balaam beat the donkey again. Then the angel of the Lord moved farther down the road and stood in a place too narrow for the donkey to get by at all. This time when the donkey saw the angel, it lay down under Balaam in a fit of rage. Balaam bit the animal again with his staff. What? And the, then the Lord gave the donkey the ability to speak. This is like a Mr. Ed episode in the book of Numbers. What have I done that deserves you beating me three times? It asked Balaam. You've made me look like a fool. If I had a sword with me, I would kill you. I'm the same donkey you've ridden all your life, the donkey answered. Have I ever done anything like this before? Um, duh. Actually, he says no. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. And he saw the angel standing down in the roadway. And the angel says, why did you beat your donkey three times? I've come to block your way because you are stubbornly resisting me. Three times the donkey saw me and shied away. Otherwise, I certainly would have killed you by time and spared the donkey. So there's so many times that we don't know 
how God is going to speak to us. And we have expectations that it's going to be a certain way. And not only do we have an expectation um, that it's going to be a certain way, we also want to pretend we know what he's going to say. And um, there was something I shared on Facebook that someone had shared on Facebook a few weeks ago that said something like, um, maybe God's not talking to you because you think you already know the answer. Ouch. But in Matthew 6, 33, it tells us to seek first his kingdom. So we need to seek him. Lord, what are you about? Let's not worry about all these circumstances. Let's not worry about what I think I should do. Um, let's go there. In Psalm 27, 4, it says, let me get to that real quick. Um, the one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek the most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple for he will conceal me there when troubles come he will hide me in a sanctuary so we need to want him more than anything else not want what we want more than anything else so it's tricky um in Moses God spoke to Moses in a, at a burning bush I mean really but it was it was that happened then the, Moses spoke to a Samaritan woman he went well who would get drink Jews don't talk to don't talk to Samaritans. Um, he used a Rahab, a prostitute, to save you know help the those who went in to scope out the land. And um, after Moses walked through the desert, they got there, and Joshua and Caleb led the people. And um, we our expectations are just not always what God puts out there for us. So don't look for those artificial sweeteners, those fake paths. Don't look for the right Bible study. Don't look for the right church that uh, says this is good and this is bad. Look for a place where God's spirit dwells and confirms the word of God in you. And don't, you know, don't try to fabricate that. Um, a little testimony here is, you know, we moved here basically it, we to Myrtle Beach area July 1st and then into our home mid-August. But I was desperately trying to make life happen here. I had my set of parameters. This is what I was going to do. And um, and it was hard. And things that I was going to do, you know, kind of got thrown up in the air a little bit. You know, I had my knee surgery, kind of went through that kind of stuff. But now I'm finding I'm, I'm just kind of walking and looking for the opportunities and letting those present themselves and have it be a yay or nay in the presence of God. And it's it's so different. Um, an example of that is the one thing I did not want to do was teach online. I did not want to teach online. I was going to sub. I was going to do. Well, that was all well and good, but subbing can be a challenge. I, I knew I didn't want to do full days, and I discovered half days. You don't know the kids well enough. Um, morning, I like my quiet time. I like my dog time. I like my gym time. So I did want a structure of my day, but I wasn't even figuring that out. And then some opportunities recently came up. I'm like, these are the opportunities for me. And um, so I started working for a company called Apples of Gold. Turns out the owners are Christians. And um, that was really cool. And in some of their presentations, they're talking about, you know, God using the, the organization to help you know, the students are struggle with literacy issues and it just was really kind of cool. So all these opportunities are coming up. Um, and I was able to audition for a show cause I, I knew, and I still know this, I don't want to get caught up in a theater thing and end up back on the directing end when I really performing is my passion. So, um, anyway, so don't, um, I am going to share a song today. I'm going to find it right after that. It is Mandisa's temporary fills. We don't want to use the things that are going to um, not sustain us. They will never fulfill us. And that's even an interesting thing with the artificial sweeteners thing. If you do any study on why like diet sodas aren't good for you, one of the things they talk about is they stimulate this need that ba says they want calories. So you end up, lots of times people end up eating more. Not only are you having all that processed food and sodium in your body, but they're like this false cover so they give you the sweetness but without the fuel so then you're like what what just happened so my friends you have a great day let's pray real quick 
Father, let us seek you first. Let us seek your kingdom. Let us seek what your will is and your wants and your desires are for our life. Put you first. Father, it's so easy to try to substitute things, to fill in um, what we think we need and want with things that are temporary, the things that are just not going to fulfill us and not fulfill your purpose in our life. So help us to seek differently in your word, Lord. Help us to seek it um, so we can be filled with your promise and your presence because we are asking you in and we're asking you to take over father putting you in the driver's seat and let us enjoy the ride of living in your presence in jesus name amen okay my friends you have a great day i'm going to finish this i'm glad it stayed this time have a great day